Hey guys, welcome back to Daniel's Tech World on YouTube, Medium, and uh, DanielRosal.tech. So what I want to just quickly uh, demonstrate in this very quick screen share is a perfect demonstration of, I talked about um, uh, moving stuff up old emails in a previous video, how to just compress those into folders if you don't need a folder anymore in your Gmail or 10 or 20 folders and they're just taking up space with a bunch of emails that you need there. Firstly, they're taking up space. Secondly, they're clogging up your email. You don't want to see them. You're done. I use the example of an old account if you're freelancing. Um, but for you know compliance purposes and just as a best practice, you want to retain them. So I discussed in a previous video how to just basically run a Google takeout, um, just capturing those folders, move that up to AWS S3 where you can put them in very, very cheap cloud storage just so they're there just in case. Um, now what I want to show is another thing, another another use case for this kind of, let's call it a best practice. This is a folder I use pCloud as one of my cloud storage locations and uh, this isn't to save space. I have plenty of space there. Um, it's just because I like to keep it relatively clean, the stuff I'm working on at that particular time. Um, so this is a folder, but I do everything on the cloud, uh, as, as everything as far as possible I do on the cloud. So this is a folder I keep here, you can see instructions and user manuals. Now I've actually just put, pushed this over to the NAS, um, but basically, you know, about I do this approximately every two years. Um, I'll clean up my P cloud and just whatever I can archive goes into archiving. This is just a folder of I scan um, either using an actual scanner or using my phone instruction manuals. If I can find the manual um, on the internet, um, I will just, or if it's on the internet anyway, I'll just like grab it. And if you can see here, it's some random, random stuff I've brought, for, I've bought from the internet over the past year. It's all PDFs. You have a uh, UPS instruction, you have writer instruction, you have uh, electric brush cleaner, 4G manual. So this is an example, this random 4G writer that I bought um, is just, I'll just, uh, actually that's a bad example. Let's take instead this um, HDD enclosure, which I bought in a computer store here in Israel a few weeks ago. I just used it for the hot spare video and uh, I couldn't find the manual anywhere online. I have no idea what brand this is. I just care that it works. Um, so what I did is I came with this little product insert. So I just quickly scanned um, you can see and just created a quick PDF. So I never really expect to need to refer to this documentation, but I will keep it anyway, just as sort of a data retention practice. So I added that into my folder and that's basically what everything in here is. It's all these user manuals. Let me now bring over the NAS, uh, which is currently up running and healthy. And uh, you can see here that I basically built out a, I've created a volume called Cloud Buckets, Cloud Backups, um, B2 buckets and then I've just created using cloud sync jobs running between the various buckets um, and uh, and uh, these folders on the computer so basically I just created folders for I created a uh, B2 bucket called pcloud archived files and I just put in this anything in pcloud that's taking up space that I don't really need to refer to so there's uh, instruction and user manuals here and uh, what I've just done is in this 0720 folder um, I've just gone ahead and basically dropped in everything. Um, once that upload is completed, I've deleted those in pCloud. Then basically, once, as soon as I drop those in, um, the uh, cloud sync starts running. This turns up to uh, you know the in progress button, and then I can just check in B2 to see that they've gone up there. So I've just dropped into Backblaze B2 here in the web UI, and I'm doing this basically just to make sure and just for demonstration purposes. So you can see it's built out the folders now. Uh, the, sinks, the sink is currently in progress, so all the stuff's moving up. Let's take a folder. The biggest one, five electrical appliances here, has 12 megabytes. And uh, you can see that the uh, PDFs are in there, the, the one same ones you've just taken a look at there. So I can see now that the HDD enclosure manual has uh, synced up, so I've just downloaded this, just taking a look, and I can see that it's uh, successfully there. So, you know, just if I'm running this process, I usually do a couple of spot checks just to make sure that everything has synced correctly. That's basically it. That's a workflow, as I said, for uh, if you want to keep your day-to-day -day cloud storage, like Google Drive, pCloud, um, whatever, Box.net, Dropbox, you want to keep them relatively lean, clean of clutter, and anything you're just keeping for long-term archiving, 
um, I recommend now this is 321 backup compliant it's sitting on the NAS and it's also gone up to the cloud uh, so this is just a way of you know you could also achieve this by backing up the archive stuff to a external hard drive and uh, then just like syncing that up to the cloud through whatever mechanism on your computer but the Synology NAS makes that uh, process particularly easy so as I said the use case here is uh, keeping your main cloud uh, device lean for stuff you're actually working on at the moment and uh, when you no longer need uh, files or stuff like user manuals for um, a hard drive enclosure then you can just go ahead and uh, put those up to the cloud um, it's something something suitable for long-term archiving and storage backblaze b2 wasabi and aws3 uh, glacier would all be perfect for this use case so uh, thanks for watching the video um, anyone that would like to get in touch can do so through my website at danielrosel.co.il thanks for watching